Do you think it's a possibility that within the next year, Mark, the Packers trade Aaron Rodgers? You know, Jason, I don't think there's any chance they'll trade Aaron Rodgers over the next year. Not at all, I think. But the thing that you talked about there is the thing that set me off. Like, I understand, like, the Green Bay Packers like Jordan Love, much like they liked Aaron Rodgers. What I don't understand is why would Green Bay give up a fourth to go get him? I get the fact if he comes to you and you take him, you can go to the press conference and say, look, too good, we had to take him on the board. When you trade up to get him, you're signaling what you're saying, Jason. Hey, we're going to change our quarterback here somewhere in the near future. So to me, this was a shock that they would actually give up the fourth to go get him because I think if they could have just sat there and waited for him and Jordan Love falls to him, it's a lot different conversation for everybody, whether that's Aaron Rodgers, whether it's the coaching staff, whether that's Brian Gutekinds, whether it's the players. So all of that's a lot different. In addition, I was surprised they didn't go get that wide receiver because in the second round, Denzel Mims, we all saw him dropping. And I thought there was a chance for the Packers to go pop somebody right next to them and just say, I've got another starting right receiver next to Devonta Adams. I'd be a lot better off. Uh, they're not trading Aaron Rodgers. They're going to let this play itself out, and it's going to play itself out for years. I give this, this timetable for Jordan Love five to seven years because of how cost-effective he is by being a first-rounder. Let's talk about the numbers and the situation, which is different than Aaron Rodgers supplanting a Brett Favre. Aaron Rodgers was projected to be the number one overall pick, failed to 24, and had to wait three years to supplant Brett Favre. Now, Jordan Love is not projected in anyone's mind to be as great as Aaron Rodgers, and he didn't have as much of a fall. But when you see him at 26, the reason why you go get him is because how cheap he will be for you for at least five years and maybe seven years if he plays himself into a franchise tag. Here's the, here's the actual counter to this. If you want to look at what happened last year, Montez Sweat was picked 26 in the draft and had a four-year $11 million deal. Basically, Green Bay just said, we're going to have a supreme backup who we're going to groom into an Aaron Rodgers position, and it's going to take five years potentially to do it. Aaron Rodgers is safe, secure. Jordan Love will not see the field for years to go, just like Aaron Rodgers didn't see the field. And they did it all for only $11 million. Amazing. I, I listened to both of y'all, and, and it, to me, it sounds like y'all arguing why I think he can get traded within the next calendar year <laughs> or 12 months from now or at some point because... They went out and traded up for Jordan Love. That, to me, speaks to how invested they are in him. That surely had to bother Aaron Rodgers. Then you come back and you don't get Aaron Rodgers any weapons? That has to bother Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is very capable if this year doesn't go well or how he feels it should go. He's very capable of telling the Packers, I want out of here. I want to go play someplace else. That, to me, is... And then, as it relates to Jordan Love, the blueprint from Patrick Mahomes to what Baltimore's done with uh, uh, Lamar Jackson to what Seattle accomplished with Russell Wilson. The blueprint, Marcellus, is to take a rookie quarterback on his rookie deal, build out the rest of your team. That's when you try to win with a young guy, not five years down the road when you got a pain. To me, it's all a perfect setup for them to trade Aaron Rodgers and for Aaron Rodgers to potentially want out of Green Bay. <laughs> Mark, first crack at the rebuttal. Be quick here. Yeah, no, I, I disagree to some extent. Look, and what I disagree about is I think you're going to play Aaron Rodgers because you've got to win a championship. That's the whole goal for everybody there. And in the next two years, if Coach LaFleur doesn't take that team to the postseason deeper or does something that doesn't go on, he's got a trouble. So does Brian Gutekinds. Look, here's what I think. You cannot play Jordan Love for one year or two years. And look, the Packers are going to beat people bad enough this year still, I think, where Jordan Love's going to go on the football field. The difference is, yeah, Aaron may sulk, and that's who he's going to be in terms of being frustrated with his role, but he's going to want to prove it. He's going to want to stick it to the Packers just like he wanted to stick it to everybody that passed on him now. He's like... Okay, you don't think I can play? I think this actually motivates Aaron Rodgers to sit there and go, I'm never letting this rookie ever get on the field. And in four or five years from now, you're never going to know, so you're going to just waste this pick. I bet you that's Aaron Rodgers' mentality.
<laughs> oh, man, you got to do your homework on this one, big dog. Look just no farther than Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers was drafted in 2005. Brett Favre had his worst year in 2005. They were looking like, wait, we got this guy at 24, Aaron Rodgers, who just got drafted here, now our great, our all-time great, had his worst year, and they still didn't put Aaron Rodgers in. He still had to wait three years to go in there. Brett Favre, when he finally left Green Bay, had one of his best years. They won 13 games. And guess what they said? OK, you won't tell us what you're going to do going forward, you four-star hand. Aaron Rodgers might have sat even longer if Brett Favre just could have made up his mind. My point is this. If if Brett Favre had Aaron Rodgers on the bench for three years, trust me, Aaron Rodgers is going to have Jordan Love on the bench for three years, if not more. I agree with that. Here's the difference. Here's the difference. And, and we'll cut one of these other topics to make room for this, because I, I don't, we, don't, we don't have to leave here. The difference is, this is a different regime. Matt LaFleur is not attached to Aaron Rodgers. Neither is the general manager. He's not attached to Aaron Rodgers. They can move on from him. This is a different NFL than 2005. There weren't the, uh, the rookie wage scale, if, if my memory serves me correct, wasn't in place right. in 2005 the way it is now. And so the whole business right. model for the NFL and what you try to accomplish on a rookie quarterback's contract is completely different. Because the worst case scenario is you're the Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott's played these four or five years and you haven't gotten what you wanted out of it, and now you got to overpay him. You need that rookie out there performing like Lamar Jackson, Russell Wilson, like Patrick Mahomes, where you can build pieces all around him, win you a Super Bowl, and then you have some wiggle room. I, I just, I'm just, and the other thing I just think y'all underestimate, I'm just telling you, Aaron Rodgers has been running out there playing with talent not befitting his talent. No different than Tom Brady, and I think part of the reason why Tom Brady got up out of New England. These guys, particularly at their age, they want to play with great skilled players. They don't want a conversation being had about have their skills diminished or are they too old when they're not out there playing with great players around them. Aaron Rodgers has every reason to be upset and to be like, damn, I'm sitting here playing in Green Bay. <laughs> Let me go play for the <laughs> L.A. Chargers or some other better city, someplace better than Green Bay that can surround me with the proper talent. Well, I mean, I look at this, look, they, the Green Bay Packers addressed the running back position. They got Dylan, they got Jones, they like that. Sternberger's coming back at tight end, who was really an underrated tight end we didn't get to see last year. So I think there's some things. Alan Lazard was a guy that I think kind of stepped up in his role, and yeah, he had opportunities down the stretch and took advantage of them. But I look at Aaron Rodgers and I just say, Look, do, could he stand up and, and say, I'm going to take my ball and go home, trade me, get me out of here? Sure. Does he have the ability to do that? Yes. And do I agree with you, the fact that it's a different regime? Yes. Are you ready to 100% turn the ball to Jordan Love and just say, let's see what happens? I don't think they are. I don't think they got the guts to do that in Green Bay right now. And the difference is, you know, the Patrick Mahomes, the Lamar Jacksons, they played in their rookie year, and at least you get a, get a glimpse. Aaron Rodgers, do I think he'll play a little bit this year? I said Jordan Love will have a chance to play. It's going to be a very short offseason, if any. That's a big difference in terms of, like, the rookie mini camps and all this kind of time to get ready. I just don't think you can think about this in the next 12 months. I think this is at least two to three years out where you get Jordan Love in your offseason program for an entire year, and you want to see him around your players to see how good of a leader is he really, because that's really what they're saying. They don't like Aaron Rodgers, the leader, because you can't not like anything else about Aaron Rodgers. So now is Jordan Love going to be better? you got to see it in person. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Speak For Yourself or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.